My Gavan and Melonine, and well met indeed. I am Arakia Garlidurthan, and welcome back to Middle Earth as we continue on as Dunland. We failed the script! Huzzah! Du -du -du -du. The script has come to an end. No, it hasn't. That's part of the point. The script hasn't come to an end. So, my um, deliberately throwing the script, as many of you worked out, it was a plan from the beginning to make sure that those of you who will most likely complete the script in the usual way, you get to see what the other side of the coin looks like, you know? I'm just thinking of you and making sure that you, the viewer, get the full picture of Isaac. And it wasn't, of course, at all that I failed at the script. But anyway, the script, the first part, has ended. What this actually means is we now have to defeat Isengard. Once we defeat Isengard, we then complete the script in the same way as if we had backstabbed Isengard as a conscious choice to begin with. We still get a great many of the rewards for the script. We will take the Hornberg and we will take Edoras in due course. That will all be will part of it. The only thing, to my, my knowledge, friend. and I would need to check the files on this because I haven't actually looked it up, but someone, one of the beta testers, I believe, mentioned it. Other beverages are available. Uh, one of the beta testers messages mentioned that. By going it the wrong way, <laughs> all we've done is actually deny ourselves access to our two uber elite units. So there are two units in this playthrough that you won't see. And I think that's it. I could be wrong. They may they may not actually even restrict us at all. It might still get us to the end, but I, I doubt it. But anyway, last time, obviously, Isengard were kicked back in. They've spawned back in. They've taken the Hornberg. They've taken Foldberg. They've taken Eisenrun. And of course, they're in Isengard. And I believe they also got Durworth. Yes, they did. So, Rohan now has much, much bigger fish to fry. They might still come and try and attack me in Dunyard, but you'll note that I very skillfully placed myself just outside I of the range you, of Oswin, uh, so he can't reach me. Yes, so, <laughs> uh, so we're going to take Dunyard back, and then we're going to hold it. We're going to build up economically, and then, to be honest, maybe for the sake of our damaged and beaten heart, we might take Tharbad back just to do a giant middle finger to the Dunedain. But at the moment, I believe we are actually just at an end turn. Uh, I'm going to leave him there and see what Rohan does around down here. Remember, Rohan is at war with Ennard Wythe, who are the game's true powerhouse at the moment. So allying them was a damned good idea because they're at war with everyone. And not only are they at war with everyone, but they're beating everyone as well. So they're doing very well. Although really what I want to happen is Ennard Wythe to get the Tharbad and then I can go all in on Isengard's eastern side, totally protected in the north, and leave it at that. But we shall see. So let us end the turn and see what the future holds. Now, do note, I have gone back to Lord of Lynx and I've, I've written to him with a substantial report on my feedback of this. Uh, and the suggestion that I put forward after some reflection and thinking about the, everything that I've thought of throughout this campaign so far, for you, the viewer, the feedback that I put forward as my top feedback, the thing I would suggest the most is simply extending the script to 80 turns instead of 60. Uh, and that's what I, what I settled on. So um, in terms of my feedback, I, whether Lynx does that or not, I don't know. But that was my top suggestion. I also suggested maybe just reducing the number of regions you need. That would have the same effect. Um, and then the other suggestions were more wider, like um, reducing the number of units that Rohan gets in the auto expansions at turn one, or indeed reducing the auto expansion completely so that they start with less regions. I also suggested maybe freezing Rohan's AI for just five or so turns. To let you, as a Dunlending player, actually push south a little bit before you meet the Juggernaut of Rohan. Now, the only point that Lynx disagreed with me on, and I'm sorry, I'm not kind of giving you anything to look at when I talk about this, but the only point that Lynx disagreed with me on was that he thinks that actually it is entirely natural that Rohan, that Dunland, should attack Ennard Wythe. Um, and that is indeed, given all the history of Divide and Conquer and how Dunland and Ennard Wythe have been. Um, set up to be enemies of each other in all the previous versions of DAC that just makes sense um, but I'll touch upon that more in a moment but first of all, customarily sit yourselves down now children and let's have a little bit of a reading session it happened last evening the faction among Wolf's line who had long opposed Saruman's friendship seized power and formally declared war against the White Wizard they were able to convince many among the Wolfguard, the nobles of Byrig, and the Brennans of Dunland to support them, and overturned those who supported Saruman. They claim the White Wizard is using Dunland as pawns in a war against Rohan, and cares naught for the lives spent in his campaign, and would gladly use us all as meat shields in his plots. Worse, 
They claim that the rumors of the sorceries that he uses to fashion the Urukai are false. He has instead used perverted and dark rituals to breed women and orc, including women from Dunland, whom he has ensorcelled with his tongue. Whether these stories are true or false matters little, for now Dunland itself is at war with Isengard. Those who supported Saruman such as Yagthak have vanished, whether dead or fled, only one thing is certain. They will in all likelihood never again serve Dunland and have either perished, killed by Saruman's agents, anti-Saruman factions in Dunland, or have fled for lands unknown to save their own hides. Those forces Saruman dispatched to aid us have also departed from our lands, returning to their true master. Even now, rumours fly that Saruman has unleashed hordes unnumbered from within Isengard. Clearly he had anticipated this and was prepared. They now sweep across the gap of Rowan, con con conquering, con 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 conquering countless villages. All prior plans must be discarded. It is clear that now the greatest threat to Dunland is not Rohan, but the snake who plots from the Orthanc. The White Wizard must fall. Isengard must now be controlled by Dunland to continue the script, and I assume from that message, Yagthak is gone. And Rohan have gone all in on trying to get Dunyard from us and not bothering with Isengard. Why are you doing that? Maybe things will be different once we've taken Dunyard. So we have to go. Oh, Rick, oh, look at that. That's an auto-resolve begging to happen. Twelve men lost yet. We'll take that. All righty then. Dunyard has Your fallen. Sadly, Yagthak is gone. We've lost the benefit of his solid uh, crossbowmen. Uh, and we retake our old ancestral lands. Good luck getting through that one, Rohan. Right, now let's test our theory then. Our ultimate theory. I want to put something to bed. If Rohan wants our blood that much, we, with the, with the force that we have here, we can defeat these armies easily. We've seen that before. Dunyard is easily defended. We will hold here, and we will hold here for a damned long time. But let's see if Rohan actually bothers to siege us, or if they walk past and go for Byring. Um, because... It's just seeming ever more likely that that might be what they can do nowadays. With the monies that we have, we need to boost our recruitment capacity. And we do that by building economic buildings. So we don't want the ancestral done. We want... Oh, we've built every economic building. Brilliant. All right, so Dunderak can't do anything else. Uh, Byrig, you can. So let's just save up our money then and we'll go from there. Oh, Dunyard, actually, you probably can. You're retraining at the moment. I would not say no to the roads. The roads would be a blessing. A blessing. A I blessing from the Lord. Um, can we get another scout out though, actually? That would be very helpful. No, spy. Agent limit reached. You could, if we get a smoking house, enables recruitment of spy, but does it add plus one? We'll find out in in, in a turn's time. Right, so... Um, ah, Dunrak got a meeting hall. Oh, yes, that made him free, didn't it? Ah, brilliant. So, Link's point about Dunland and Enidwyth have always been enemies in all the previous versions of Dak, so it's natural to assume a Dunlending player would go for Enidwyth, given that all that's happened in Dak before. But, two points I would raise on that. The first is relatively minor, but with every new iteration of Dak, there are new players. So, there'll be a sizable chunk of your community who will play Dunland, having never actually ever played Divide and Conquer before. So that point is moot. They're going to come into this, see that you're supposed to attack Rohan, and go for Rohan. The second point that they've always, and this is the bigger point, the second point that they've always been set up to attack Enid Wythe is true, but, oh, is that message going to spawn every single turn? I think it might. Um, the second point is that, yes, you used to be have to, you used to have to go for Enid Wythe, but now we're changing the narrative on purpose and driving the player towards Rohan. That is the point. The script goes into great detail about that, and anyone who does follow Divide and Conquer will know that this shift away from Ennard Wythe to Rohan is the point. Uh, it, 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 it just defeats the whole purpose of all of this if you are, when you are met with a response that says, oh, I allied Ennard Wythe and I attacked Rohan because that's what the script told me to. And the response is, oh, are you, why did you ally Ennard Wythe? That seems peculiar to me. You're, you always used to attack Ennard Wythe. You think, well, well, why did you bother setting me up to attack Rohan then? You might as well have just told me to attack Enid Wife if that's so usual. And that's no dig at Lynx at all. I really respect Lynx. I have a heap of time for him and I'm desperate to try and support him as much as I can, short of actually modding again. Um, I'm so grateful to him in a million ways. And I do not want this to come off as me just hounding Lynx. Lynx is doing the Lord's work. He's absolutely keeping the mod afloat. So all the power to him. But I just don't think that's a good argument. You're deliberately changing who Dunland's enemy is 
And thereby you can't say, well, we've changed their enemy to be Rohan, but why didn't you attack Enid Wells? Like, well, because you told me not to. That, 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 so I just don't think that really works. But uh, anyway, so when you all come to play version 5, there's a strong chance that the, the script may be extended, the region requirement that you need may be lessened, or there may be some wider changes to Rohan to stop them as much, um, just to make them easier. The, and the reason why I think the turn extended is the best way to deal with it, because people like Carnage, who've won the game by turn 40, even if you made the restriction harder and you made it 50 turns, 40 turns, He's still going to be able to do it. So you're catering to no one. You're just continuing to shrink the player base and alienate those who just want to have fun, um, which is what we have to strive for in a mod. That Well, uh, Lynx may have a different outlook. It's his mod now. He may think differently. But when I led the mod, I always, always thought of the general um, player base as the primary focus. Um, there's no point catering to those who think that absolutely everything is too hard because there are the people like that out there. Um, there are people out there who think that absolutely every campaign is hard. There are attested examples of people losing high elf campaigns, for example, which is without a doubt one of the easiest campaigns in the game or the dwarves, another fair example. People have lost these campaigns in the past. Um, and so there's no point catering to those that say that everything's too hard. And similarly, there's no point catering to those that say that nothing is hard enough because you will just simply never yes, appease these different groups. They will always have problems. Uh, Your orders, you're going to need to go into that fort. So it's always the masses in the middle that it's best to aim for. And also you have to bear in mind that people aren't playing Divide and Conquer for a challenge. People are playing Divide and Conquer because they love Lord of the Rings. You wouldn't play this game in the 21st century if you didn't like Lord of the Rings. Because it is an outdated game. If you just want a total war game, you're going to play Warhammer. You're going to play Three Kingdoms. You're going to play Rome 2. You're not going to play Medieval 2, are you? So it's only Lord of the Rings fans. And Lord of the Rings fans, like myself, we don't really care if it's hard or easy. I just like frolicking around in Middle Earth. Why do you think Bree is one of my favourite nations? Bree are universally, generally not liked. But I love them because they just really capture that feeling of Lord of the Rings a lot. And I like that. Uh, I'm going to give this army on one more end turn and hope that they're going to attack me because I don't want to have to come out of the city to fight them. Uh, and if they don't attack me, then we'll have to rise up because we've only got four turns left. But I have no other troops to send down there. So if they, if they do do well, then we're, we're, we're just dead there. We're scuppered. But with the money we've got, let's keep pumping it into economic buildings. I'm so tempted. So, 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 so tempted to... Oh, I don't think we actually can. I think we're as high as we can go, aren't we? Ooh, Mason's Guildhouse. Yes, I believe we are. Yes, we have got the highest tier building. Oh, that's good. All right, well, let's go with the Tanner's Guild because that's the that brings in a lot of money. It's a huge money maker for us. Oh, and you can upgrade. Oh, yes, please. Oh, what perfect timing. I never thought we'd see that upgrade. All right, let's see if they go for it. So, yeah, so, um, yes, thank you, Rohan. Yes. Um, I should also say, a lot of people have said, like, it's clear that I prefer the Reunited Kingdom campaign. And yes, it is. I mean, that's true. I prefer the Reunited Kingdom campaign an awful lot. I'm really enjoying it, even now. It's such a fun campaign. Um, and obviously the Dundon one, I enjoyed it a little less that it's not gone according to plan. But that doesn't stifle my um, desire for it. As much as you might think. I am still thoroughly enjoying it. And the visuals of our Dunlending armies are really cool. And we've still got more units to see and more things to do. Uh, and now we have arguably a harder passage to completing the script. And as I say, it may well be, because I haven't actually checked in the files myself yet, and I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head. But it may be that actually we haven't stopped any part of the script working. We've just made it longer to complete now, which I really don't mind, because as I say, I'm really now just waiting for version 5. So if this campaign ends up taking 30-odd um, episodes as well, then so be it. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. Right, so Glearhuin is a pike, but there's no point risking him in battle if we can avoid it. So we're going to go with just the tried and true and tested defense of this city, which is to stand on this hill and throw stones at your enemy. And if we want to, we can also run people down the hill there to attack, but I doubt that we'll need it. But we'll have all of you in backup. All of you in place over here. The thing that I am most looking forward to this week is playing Humankind. The Bolivar update is coming out this week. Amplitude Studios have given me some free keys to the game on Steam, so you have to have Steam to get them. And I'm going to do a giveaway in the first episode. 
Um, so you, if you are interested in humankind, I would heavily recommend you come and get involved in that video because there will not be that many people that watch it, I don't think. And uh, so your chances of getting a free copy of humankind are exponentially raised. Um, but I'm really looking forward to playing it for the channel and because it's just going to be something we've not really seen on the channel. And I appreciate not very many of you will watch it, but I am absolutely loving playing Humankind at the moment. I've loved playing Humankind since it came out. We played a multiplayer game of it at the weekend and I enjoyed that and I'm just really, really, really enjoying it. Um, and uh, so if you are even remotely interested in it, please do tune in to the first episode which will be coming out this week. And um, you may you may get lucky. You may get that one of those free copies. So I've got three free copies to give away, which is fast, fantastic. Um, let's move up. Let's move backwards a little bit, actually. And the H2 of you. Something that I used to do with pikes, which you don't see as fashionable nowadays, is I used to double bank the first row. So you'd put one pike unit on top of another pike unit. And it would have the effect of creating a really impenetrable line in the front line of pikes where they're all standing on top Curses. of each other. The enemy are it just makes so gates. many enemies. Right, let's move the javelins forward because they have way less shots than these guys. Way less... Stones? Stones. They have considerably less ammunition than these fellows. Why are you... Oh, you are all firing because, of course, you're on fire at will. But don't fire at will. I don't think we're going to need the back line. Right, let's speed her up. So, yeah, so uh, look out for Humankind this week. It depends. Normally, I would record it at the moment. I'm hoping to record it on Wednesday afternoon, which is the 8th of June, if you are watching this in the future. So I'm hoping to record it on the 8th of June, but the Bolivar update may not have come out by then. So it may have to be later. Uh, but stay tuned for that. And I would ask you all to just give it a go. Just watch the video, see what you think. Every time I ask people to do that, there's normally five or ten of you, which is five or ten more than normal, who do sometimes... Uh, I've seen a couple of comments of people who have said, Gallo, I like you. you. You asked me to watch this video, so I've watched it, and I can say that this is not my cup of tea, but um, thanks anyway. And that's absolutely fine. Like You don't have to like anything else. You can be here just for Dak if you want to. I don't mind. But I would ask that you do just give it a try, even if just for five minutes and you think, oh, this is awful, then don't don't continue watching. Don't put yourself out at my expense, but give it a try. Uh, so that's Humankind this week. Um, and otherwise, of course, we'll just continue with the Dunedain and with Dunland until we really have a... until we know what to do with ourselves. Um, right, let's target some units that will actually be helpful down here. Is something shooting back at us? Druidine hunters are... So if you could all just target them. Now remember, the stones throwers are pretty rubbish at throwing stones over their own teammates. So once the javelins are done, we'll move stone throwers down, and then they can uh, then they can actually help. But this is going to be a, a classic, easy defeat of Rohan, sadly. In many ways, I mean yes. If the the Dunlending campaign isn't so difficult that if I played it again. Would I be able to get the 60 regions? Absolutely. I mean, I would I would do things completely differently and, yeah, I would go for it. Um, but I just don't... I just don't think that's... I don't think that's a sound argument either because the amount of people who I have seen moan through their back teeth about how hard the Dunedain are, for example, and how they've played the Dunedain once and they're now never going to be able to play them again. They're too hard. Uh, and I appreciate a lot of you will say, oh, you shouldn't cater to those whiners, but those whiners make up far more of the play base than you. And... We just want people to enjoy themselves. We're not out here making the world's hardest game. So uh, well, I'm not part of it anymore. But that was my philosophy. That was always my philosophy. Of course, if I ran an actual game, and this is a part that a lot of gamers just hate to, uh, hate to face the reality. If I was leading an actual game, my philosophy would probably be the same because casuals tend to drop more money on games than um, hardcore fans do. And game companies are companies. There will be people in the teams of any game creator that, of course, absolutely love the game they're working on. They love it with a passion. They have a passion for the substance, for the subject material. But they also have a passion for eating and heating their homes and living their lives. And that second section only comes from getting paid. And they're not going to be paid if their game studio collapses because no one buys the bloody game. So you've always got to have that in the back of your mind as well, that they are trying to make money. Now, now mods have the un, have the enviable, enviable position of not actually needing to make money because, of course, they don't make any money. 
Uh, so they do get that little glorious advantage. Uh, let's run some of our troops around the side and just hit them in the back. No, actually, not until the general dies. If we don't, if we wait. But at the moment, we are getting our uh, pikes are getting soundly beaten, and our stone throwers are not throwing stones very effectively at all. Then they're like, they're just not targeting what I want them to target. Hardly any of them are throwing their stones. And the bodyguards are targeted were over there anyway. Let's try putting you three then in uh, in the original position you were in and go from there. We might need to send some troops down to the front line actually. I think the pikes might lose this. Down we go, down we go. Get some defences forces in. Yeah, let the pikes get flanked. Well, that reinforcements have arrived. How many of the enemy has died? Oh, hardly any. Our pikes are losing their one advantage. And they're not even killing the bloody cavalry that's standing in front of them. Oh, it's like our nation has just given up. We've decided, nope, that's enough. We're not going to win this, so we're going to give up. But the pikes are just dying. They're just getting there massacred. They haven't held the line at all. Maybe the double pike line is not a good idea. But push back, everyone. Push back. Blob into that great wall of enemies there. Let's get some killing done. And can we please kill that general? Just knock him on the head. Ah, oh, look, they're flank their cell swords are making good room up there. Pikes versus very good infantry units. Bad mix. This is why Isengard's going to be such a challenge for us. But we're not restricted by the barracks event anymore, of course. And we still get really good units. Even if we don't get the quote-unquote best units in our um, through the way that we're doing the script now, we still get good units in the later stages of the game. Uh, the cell swords are thinking twice. The pikes really are now all dead. So we've got yeah, no anti-cavalry in that line, really. They have lost half their men. I mean, there are still some pikes in it, but those Rohan Royal Guard just survive everything. Clearhuin, you are going to need come down here and just show these bastards how it's done, because there's still a lot of cavalry here, and we are not killing it very effectively. Clearhuin should mince those cavalry units. Come on. Form a wall. Right, jiggle it up a little bit. No, or just walk straight into the enemy. Yeah, that works as well. That works just as well. Our stone throwers really are doing sod all today, aren't they? Just throw your stones over the top of them. Why are so few of you firing your stones? Right, Gleohuin's on the case now, though. Watch as Glehuin dies in this fr fray. Of course he will. Of course he will! What's the position now? Oh, they have lost more than us. But it is costing us everything, apparently. <laughs> oh dear. We have hardly anyone left that we can pull up in reserve. Why do these guys... Why are they finding it so hard to throw stones effectively? Let's move up to there instead, see if you can still throw. Oh, you're running away. What are you doing? What are you doing? Sometimes this game just reminds you that it's very, very old. And it doesn't like following rules, any kind of laws of physics. It just has a mind of its own. But Glearhuin has managed to come over and do exactly as you'd expect. Is churning his way through the remaining forces. There's some Yorling Axemen, some Peasant Scouts, some Peasant Scouts over there. The two Generals, I think, are still fighting. There's one over there. There were two Generals, though, weren't there? Because there was one engaged in combat while the other one was standing over there, I'm sure. Uh, 
Uh, the generals. If the general had died earlier, it would have been a totally different story, of course. Peasant scouts actually flanking round on our pikes. That's not something you see every day, is it? Finally! Thank goodness for that. Jesus. Peasant scouts fighting on like they are the most elite unit in Rohan's roster. Just defying the odds again. Do we need another peasant scout moaning episode? I would like as many of those as can be captured to be captured, please. Thank you very much. There we are. Our foe is utterly half. Vanquished. We managed to keep half Let alive. We didn't use our day. second general, which was remember it as the day of 421. He really did have an impact, didn't he? He changed the tide of that battle. So let me know your thoughts on Dunland. Let me know what you think about the way the script should be. Either should should it be made easier? Should it not be tampered with at all? There was one gentleman who did say um, Gallo is moaning about the fact that they're judging their feedback off of one playthrough from one other person or two other people. Sorry. Why should we take the feedback on his one playthrough as well? It's not about the feedback from any one individual person, whoever your name was, I'm afraid. I can't remember what it is, but it's not about the feedback from one individual person. It's about the feedback from many different people. So the fact that my gameplay experience was so different from the other two people who backed each other up and said it's crazy easy, but were both like pro level players, pro level players take with a pinch of salt, suggests that... It doesn't necessarily mean that either I'm rubbish and therefore should be disregarded or they're amazing and therefore should be disregarded. That's not, in part, that is what I'm saying about their review because of my outlook on the games. But what I'm saying is those three reviews should be taken in turn, mixed together to give a bigger, bigger, broader picture. And perhaps the two people who profess to be legends at the game saying that it's super easy and it, should, it, it doesn't need to be tweaked. And then the person who's not super good at the game saying this could do with a bit of a rework. It's about taking that all together. So that's why my suggestion is just extending the script a bit. I wasn't, I'm not drastic, suggesting anything drastic. Like, let's cut Rohan's money. Let's, um, let's turn Rohan's AI off altogether. Or let's give them no regions. I was just suggesting some minor things that I thought maybe would work. Like the freezing their AI for a few turns. Or um, giving them a few less troops at the start. Or maybe one less region. Something like that. Um, I'm not going all the way. Like give Rohan Edoras and call it a day. Like, So it's about taking all the views together. That's why the feedback is important. Now we were managed. We did successfully beat them. But remember we're at war with Isengard. Um, as much as Rohan is. And Isengard are about to slap Rohan. But annoyingly, they then seem to be coming for me, and I will not be I'm able to stop Lurtz's army. You. Um, so, Dunyard may not stay alive for very long. So, let's focus on getting a garrison up instead, <laughs> if we can. Um, whilst the two things behind you go, EK. Yep. Ended White's got its hands Lord. filled. What is it you wish to discuss? I can't do anything with you, actually. Until oh, I could go today. and talk to Bree. Uh, let's reset you, because otherwise we've got that stupid problem, haven't we? Character reset. Futa. Hope this had Bungo. Be worth our time. Look at that. There we go again. They want a ceasefire. They're even going to pay mistake. for it. You Farewell, absolute then. morons. Why did they attack me? I just don't understand this game sometimes. They attacked me despite not even wanting to be at war with me. It feels like someone is behind a curtain with a gun to their head saying, Attack Dunland. Go on, attack Dunland, you, you green bastards. Attack Dunland. And they're saying, well, I don't want to attack Dunland. We're already at war with four other nations. They're like, I don't give a damn. Attack Dunland. So they've come to war with me for no reason other than the voice in the back of their head, the AI anti-player bias. Forcing them to. Although we're using the term anti-player bias a lot more now. We're throwing it around ever since the release of Warhammer and how outrageous it was in Warhammer. Both in 2 and 3. They toned it down in 2 and then decided to undo the toning it down in 3. Bizarre. And so now they're re-toning it down again. But remember, AI anti-player bias has existed in Total War since Total War was a thing. It has always been there. It will always be there. Because if it isn't there, you, the player, will have no challenge whatsoever. And that's also something you want to avoid. Unless you're making a passion project like this, which is catering to a very small set of fans who really, really, really like Lord of the Rings, 
Um, you want your game to have at least some challenge. If it's too easy, people will complain. Um, so annoyingly, Rohan, uh, as expected, no match for Isengard, and the player bias that I've just been speaking of at length is kicking in straight away, and we are going to be attacked by Isengard. Uh, if we do die, I probably will restart the Dunland playthrough, and then this will all be moot anyway, because we're going to be playing it again. But, um... Orders. Yes, my lord. If we don't die... I mean, that army will defeat our entire you. nation. I just, I have no way of dealing with that. As you can see, my whole army is currently in Dunyard. My only hope, really, is to yes, make peace with lord. Isengard. Um, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Uh... And let Rohan and Isengard go to war with each other for a little bit of time. Oh, if you haven't seen me play this before, I cheat move diplomats all the time, by yes, the way. I can't be bothered with the stupid uh, uh, effects in this lies do you bring us then? Oh, it's getting up there. Uh, I can give you 4,000 gold. Somehow I've got 5,000 gold. And I'll pay you 1,000 for another eight turns as well. They're going to reject it, aren't they? I must inform you that is all. Um, hmm. I, we can't deal with that. Clear Huin, get yourself out of there. Continuing tomorrow. Because you're more powerful. You're reasonably good, at least. I, there's just nothing we can train this early on that will defeat that Isengard army. And that is exactly the point. This time, you're not going to hear me saying, like, God, Isengard are so... They're almost impossible to defeat. That is the point. Um... <laughs> Going this route very much does mean we are going to be up against it, for want of a better word. Um, mine, useless mines. I'm tempted with that because it would train better, more units, but we—I don't think we can actually train better units until. Ah, uh, we need the meeting hall then. Yeah. And then we've got a great hall already, so why can't we build that? We've got ancillary training grounds. So in the barracks, we're already a town. That requires a lord's hall, blacksmith lord's hall. And that just requires a meeting hall, which we've got. And I'm sure you have to build the dun first. Oh, no, hang on. We're the Frekalinga one. So we need the military camp, which is a lord's hall. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we do need that. Chuck in whatever we can chuck in. Just train everything you can. We'll try and hold Isengard. We've we've got to we've got to try, haven't we? Uh, we might My as well Lord take him Lord. away as well. My Lord. Let Isengard Lord soak itself up on some chaff there, but take away the better units. Can you train anything? Yes, My Lord. No, no, you can't. All right. If we go, if we go down, we're going down in glory. I'm not just going to quit and restart. They're going to have to defeat us. Songs will be sung. Of Dunland's quashing at the hands of Isengard. The problem is, though, of course, because now we know exactly what to do and not do. Um, if we play this again, I imagine it probably won't be as hard. But then it might be. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, part of me does want to play again, just to see if, even when you know what to do, is it still as difficult as it's been? Even when you know you need to just rush Rohan, build economically, people. don't cross the river in the north. Um, or indeed go for the attack Ennard Wyth route. But the problem is, is I don't think I'm good enough to attack Ennard Wyth. I just don't think I can win the victories that Carnage was winning that made him defeat Ennard Wyth so easily. Um, so I don't think that's a viable route. Yes, my lord. Right, if they're going to get Dunyard anyway... We shall hear you out, but do not expect... What about much. if we just give it to them? Hmm. No. Goodbye. Yeah, no, they're never going to accept a ceasefire. Right, they've trained everything they can train. Byrig. Kill Riders wouldn't say no. Yeah, you really get rubbish uh, <laughs> recruitment. Two units of uh, time is awful. 106 of you. Let's try and get you home. You might be able to retrain. Goblins and Bree have gone to war. Ended by still doing sod all around there. Isengard's full might seems to have been unleashed upon us. I can't see what's happening with Goond. Isengard got a lot of troops. Uh, Dunyard is going to fall. I mean, I probably won't even bother fighting it, to be honest. We don't really need the money. There's no point really destroying any of these buildings because we just don't need that money. 
so we might as well leave it. We can try and meet Isengard on one of these bridges. We'll see which way they're going, and we'll stand on the bridge. And then they'll just move to the other one. You just know they will. That's almost certainly what's going to happen. But uh, we're closing in on the end of the video. So, uh, I, as I say, I don't think there's much point in fighting the battle at Dunyard. If, even if we kill 50, it's going to make so little difference in the long run. Uh, the 10 or so that the auto reserve will kill is probably enough. But we didn't really want any of the stragglers. We can't really retrain the stragglers. And even if we can, there's no real benefit to it. We just want more units. He's got two of our own clan spearmen. Frekalinga Hill Riders. I'm surprised he's not got Yagthak. He's got All Thank Guard in his company. Goodness, they really did, mate. Why didn't you just make it a defeat at turn 60? <laughs> Rather than this soft defeat. But then, no, I suppose this does give you a chance. That if you rolled the dice again, it might have gone a different way. Isengard might focus on Rohan, given that they're surrounded by them. But perhaps not. Perhaps they will always just beeline for you, because why not? It's always so, and the and the anti-player bias thing always does irritate me because I come and look at it from a um, from a sort of role-playing perspective, and from a role-playing perspective, it makes no sense at all for Isengard to then go all in on on us in Dunland, um, because they Saruman's purpose is to destroy Rohan. I'm coming at it from a Lord of the Rings role-playing perspective, obviously. Saruman's purpose is to destroy yes. Rohan. That's what he set out to achieve. So for him to then just drop everything to go and kill Dunland real quick makes no sense at all. So that's what irks me. But I appreciate you can't get around that. The game Lord. is the game. Isengard will Trust always have what the anti-player bias effects. I do not think this meeting was quite useless. So they're going to keep coming for us. I just want to go... Um, I will only go one more turn and then I am going to end it, even though it's a few minutes earlier than normal. But um, I want to see where Lurtz is going to go. If he comes up towards the bridge, we'll stand on the bridge. I won't actually force you to watch as Isengard, maybe over the course of 15 turns, decides when and how it's going to auto-resolve victories against me in Byrig and Dunderak. But if we can crush Lurtz's army and can beat that, then I'm going to play on. We're going to try and take Isengard and we're going to try and win the, Nor the through the usual route. If we cannot do anything about Lurtz and that army defeats us, I will just call it a day and we'll just start again. Uh, but we, if we can beat that, I'm going to do that. Because you've seen a million campaigns on YouTube where people play in the best possible way. And if you're still here after all these years, you are not here for extremely efficient gameplay. You're here for a laugh. And that's what I intend to bring you. Oh, we get another recruitment slot in a moment. Um, once you built me that, we'll go for some eco. Although the Ancestral Dumb would not say no over there, actually. Oh, of course, now we're at the point where you choose, aren't we? Well, the other one's Frekalinga, so you go with the Dun. Dun, Dun. We should probably get the Militia Garrison, but I don't think it's as important at the moment. Um, I want to move them up there, but I just I think that might be a bit risky because we won't be able to get them down very quickly. Oh, I'll tell you what we can do yes, is go lord. and build a tower real quick this tower just so that we can see what's happening. Over the lands. Yes, real lord quick, lord build a tower real quick. There you go, chuck one in over this there as well. Tower will keep vigil over the lands. My lord, by your command. Get those clan hunters Ordinance. back. So we've got that fort over as there as well, wish. but again, that's just too far away. Oh, and the goblins yeah. will stop Ordinance. us walking past it, so that's not worth it. All right. Let's see what Lurtz does. This is going to be the final turn. The final passage of time. Come on, Lurtz. Head south. Go back and fight Rohan. You've taken Dunyard. You've got what you want. Let me assemble my army. Come back and take Dunyard. And then chip away at your army with ambush attacks and the like. That's the plan. But will he see it through to fruition? That's the question on everyone's mind today. Hello, I'm Arakir Galadir, and welcome back to Jazz FM. Today's exploits see Arakir Galadir losing quite substantially to Isengard as he continues in an absolutely shameless attempt to try and claw something out of his unbelievable defeat. We'll see if he can pull it off this time. He's never done it in the past, but maybe this time, maybe, just maybe, he'll get lucky and something will go his way. Stay tuned. Find out more.
Byrig, yes, upgraded. There's the Lord's Hall. That's the next one we need for the next building. Do we go for that or do we try and get some money? Let's try and get some money. Build some roads. Dunlarak is getting its dune. Ancestral dune. You can take another unit of those. Uh, and then a great hall would give you more free upkeep, actually. More free upkeep. Your oh, you probably could go Lord. over there. Yeah, look, Moria buggered off. Let's make the money while Isengard is sitting around doing nothing. They're not coming for us at all, so yes, their, their hand soon, I should think, is going to be forced. Of course, we can just go north. We could just abandon Dunlop altogether, like a diplomacy game in Age of Empires. But let's toggle Fog of War and just see what's actually happening. I know it's cheating, but remember that we are actually now attestedly, attestably, well, I happen to know now that this campaign that you're watching is me quite literally live beta testing version 5 for you. And not only that, but from what I can see, no one else is testing Dunland at the moment. So if we can push on as long as possible. Holy hell fire! Ennard Wife, you bit off more than you could chew. The Empire of Bree has arisen. The monster that is Bree has come out of nowhere. Oh, Reginald of Dorwinian has a messed up um, strategy model. He's been given an extra number somewhere along the line. That's bad. Um, that's very easily fixed, but it just means he's been given a trait which bumps up his number by one and then gives him the wrong mm, strategy model. So the game then applies the model, but it gets the textures from the wrong place and it creates this bizarre, uh, horrific demon spawn thing with weird textures all out of place. Anyway, the Northern Dunedain are doing all right as well, actually. With Darbad and Argon taken from me, they've built a little empire here in uh, southern Mithithel. Minhiriath. Mithithel's a river, isn't it? Uh, yes. Oh, that is the river Mithithel right there. Oh, it curls up to the north. It curls up to the north. Oh, it curls up to the north here, though. This river I'm not sure actually exists. Just outside of Tharbad. No, so we've got the the Glanduin coming down here, joining the Guathno. And where the two meet, the river changes name to the Mithithel up here before it breaks in twain and the Mithithel goes north where it becomes the River Horwell, or same name, one's in English, one's in Elvish. And then the southern side becomes the Loudwater or more famously the Bruinen. Lasto Bruinen Rimo Hithailnen. Lasto Bruinen Rimo... Ah, I can't remember the last word. What she's saying is, listen waters of the Bruinen, listen to me when Arwen raises the river. Uh, but I've got those words out of order. Anyway, let's carry on just observing the world. So the High Elves are dead. They are well and truly out of this. I don't know if they're at war with the Dwarves as well. Shall we have a look? High Elves, war with Angmar, Goblins, Eridloon and Enver. Yeah, so the High Elves are dead, sadly. So Imladris will be their last holdout. Where High Lord Elrond the Fearless fights. But then that's very much true to lore, isn't it? They did just have an Imladris that was nigh unassailable and they just stayed there. Oh, the Misty Mountains, you beautiful bastards. My staunch allies... Somehow they took Kamath Bryn. No, hang on. <laughs> Wrong game. I'm thinking of the, the um, Reunited Kingdom campaign. So ignore that. The, the um, Misty Mountains are doing very well. And they're allied to Angmar. Oh, Jesus Christ, the Northern Dunedain are on a roll. Something has gone... This is what happens when Dunland is not involved in the North. Bree and the Northern Dunedain just lose their shiz and they go wild. They're on a rampage. They've got Litash for crying out loud. Overlord Agendower has been pushed back into the Etten Moors where he's going to die a death at the hands of some trolls, I should imagine. Rohan, though, let's turn our attentions to them. Still kicking up a fuss over in the east. This is what I mean. If you have, if you ever were wondering if Rohan are too strong in this iteration, they are. They were attacking Dol Guldor when the AI was turned on. Goodness gracious. That's obscene. <laughs> it's obscene. <laughs> but Isengard giving them very much what for. So Gund and Bregnas, their last two holdouts. Isengard sending troops through, chasing some Rohirrim forces into Ennard White's terrain, territory. Gondor haven't really gotten involved. Isengard are really quite powerful. But as you can see, their primary armies, we've got Captain Thrak chasing Rohan down in Ennard White, which Ennard White will probably whittle down. We've got Lugthak, who I think will go for Bregnas. Isengard border too many enemies now to, I think, go all in on me, and that's our hope. So the primary army here, led by Lurtz, the northern contingent, hopefully they get tired and have to go elsewhere. But you'll note they've sacrificed garrisons completely at Bar Isengard, which has a massive garrison. Uh, and Fangorn camps are recent 
Rohan are going to be obliterated by Isengard, I think. Can we, from two regions, spring back? Ooh. Like a daisy. Popping out of the snow. Like daisies. Anywho, that is the Toggle Fog of War. That is the episode. Thank you very much for watching along. Let me know what you think about Dunland. Um, and as I say, don't bother saying, like, I think you should just restart now, Galu, because I'm not going to. Sorry, I don't really fall to peer pressure. Or indeed what the general people want. Um, so we will fight on as long as possible, but if it becomes apparent that Isengard is going to kill us, if we can't defeat this army here, we will just start again. And then we'll start again. Uh, if we can defeat that army, we will press on and we will try and beat Isengard. Because it's just something you won't see. And you certainly won't play yourselves because the script's going to probably be changed a little by the time you play. But let me know your thoughts on the script, please. And if you do see that Humankind video pop up this week, tune in, I beg you. <laughs> I never ask you for anything. So watch this one video, damn it, because I bloody love it. <laughs> I haven't recorded it yet, so you can't watch it yet. Anyway, for now, Navar Naden Perimad Belunin. And farewell. <laughs>